Howdy! Well, I'm back. Um, some of you may recall a while back I talked about doing a video on altering figures and vehicles and whatnot. And um, I introduced this one uh, television show that interested me back in the early 70s, oh, 70, 71, 72, somewhere around there. It was a show called Long Street. And it was about, I know as odd as this sounds, a blind insurance investigator named Mike Longstreet, uh, his assistant Nikki, um, her cool-looking Jeep Commando or Commander, or whatever it was called. But most importantly for me at the time, this guy right here, Pax, the white German Shepherd. Now, in my later life, my wife and I actually acquired a white German Shepherd from the local pound. We had him for a few years, you know, before we lost him, as most dog owners do. But um, I've always been wanting to recreate uh, that white German Shepherd and some of the scenes um, from New Orleans. Most notably, it'll be a scratch built made of the uh, St. Louis Cathedral in Jackson Square. I've got the little sculpture of uh, Colonel Jackson started. I started that a long time ago, and I've since been able to find a, a, a better looking horse figure that I can alter and mold and recreate to look like the old bronze. But uh, the problem I've had over the years was finding a good dog for this project. Um, one of the earliest <laughs> samples was this, this little pooch right here. I don't know how well this is going to pick up on camera. Oops. This was the first white German Shepherd dog I ever created. I don't know how well that's going to pick up or if it's going to pick up. I'll show it a little later in the video. Uh, that was actually, whoa, big scary face. That was actually one of the uh, dogs out of the Matchbox uh, dog truck carrier. Um, and it's, it's not even a German Shepherd. It was, a, I believe a uh, one of the hound dogs from the set and I flattened the tail between the pliers I took a exacto knife blade and separated the ears from the head and lifted them and heated them slightly and flattened them and shaped them I did a lot of a lot of crazy stuff when I was younger but the point is now that now that I'm old I like to do it more correctly so I was fiddling around with some old Merton dogs that I found, Walter Merton dogs, that I acquired uh, from a seller on eBay. Uh, she was kind enough to take them out of a set of Mertons that she was selling to sell me just the dogs. And there was a great selection of dogs in this set, uh, a couple of which being German Shepherds. And uh, what this is going to concentrate on, this video here, is going to concentrate on removing the paint from a small figurines and um, of course later on we'll be repainting them but uh, I had wondered if the paint could be removed without damaging the figures so I of course my noodle put some things together and I thought well they paint them with acrylics let's use an acrylic thinner so I used an acrylic thinner from uh, acrylic thinner from true color paint and this is real good this is nice paint uh, I'm not sure, but this may have been the company that replaced the Polyscale. I'm not really sure about that. But anyway, let's uh, move the camera down here and uh, show you what's what's happening on the work on the work table. Okay. Now let me just get a get it set up here for you. Come on in close. All right, now. Let's get these guys set up. And what you can see here, I hope, is the dogs from the Merchant set. Let's try and get this focus ring set here. Here we are. There we go. Now I can focus by hand and make sure that you're seeing everything 
as clear as humanly possible to see these little guys. All right. What we have here are some sprues with doggies attached. Doggies and kitties. Uh, dogs and cats. And, the re and that's another thing. I wanted some nice cats. Now, there are a lot of companies that make them. Unfortunately, some of the ones that are being made today uh, look more cartoonish than they need to be for some reason. Um, they're, just, they're just not well proportioned, not really well sculpted. But this old set of Merton dogs and cats here, you can see we've got quite the variety of breeds of dogs. We've got Great Danes, we've got Poodles, we've got a Boxer, a couple of Doberman Pincers here on the end. We have a um, small dog here, we have some cats, walking cats, another Poodle, another couple of Great Danes, painted in different colors. Collie, we have a Borzoi, for crying out loud, a Borzoi, a Russian Wolfhound, a couple of... Uh, Coonhounds, I guess they are some kind of retriever dog. And then on this black sprue, we've got some kitty cats, a little hot dog, another little, I guess this might be a miniature poodle. Yeah, it's a miniature poodle, a black poodle, black standard poodle. Then we have a couple of German shepherds. Now, both of these German shepherds, okay, were painted similar. They were both, get a little light on these pups here. They were both gray and black, okay? Now, without thinking, I automatically assumed that the dogs were gray and the black markings were painted on them. Well, when I started removing the paint from this guy right here last night, I realized that the sprue indicates the color of the dogs and the cats. So this is a black sprue, and all the dogs and cats on this sprue were molded in black. That makes sense because the gray on this dog is what came off. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to remove the gray paint from this German Shepherd dog right here. Then he will be painted white to look like the dog Pax from the program Longstreet. And as I said, um, originally I had remodeled this little dog right here. This is from an old Matchbox, whoops an old matchbox set. At the time I was younger, my fingers were smaller. <laughs> my grip was better. But this was made from a, um, a retriever. And again, the tail was flattened in, uh, with a, uh, a um, long nose pliers. The ears were cut from the head and lifted and uh, flattened to be reshaped. The walking harness is actually made out of bent wire. Okay. And then... Um, this was a Bachman uh, human, and this was uh, painted to represent Mike Longstreet at the time. And I'll be using newer people, namely the, the Prizer uh, people. And I have different types. I have, I have a, a set of walking and standing people here, unpainted. And then I also have a set of uh, walking people that I have chosen some of them to be repainted um, as the characters from the show. Originally, I also used <laughs> this giant matchbox Jeep as the vehicle. However, uh, the top was, was made by myself. This is just some styrene at the time. I, I guess it might have been like some kind of sign uh, signage plastic. But as you can tell, uh, it was a little large for the people being used, okay? That's really a giant Jeep, and it uh, wasn't going to go. Then I thought, well, let me use a Viking thing, okay, with the top, because this matches the vehicle in question in the show. This matches this, oops. The shape of it matches the vehicle from the show, okay? You see the, the, the angle of the, uh, the rear of the, of the Jeep? It's made by Jeep. This is, I think, the Commando or the Commander. Um, it's got this odd body shape to it, but then the front is typically Jeep, all right? So with that, I went with this Viking 
German officer's car a thing, basically, because of the big reason that the, the roof and the back line of this vehicle matches up pretty much with the Jeep Commando. And of course, it has the same type fenders. Now, the big difference in this is that the front of this vehicle did not match the front of the Jeep. So, I took a Vikings Jeep, uh, a Rocco Jeep's kit. I cut the nose off of it and I put it in place on this thing. The front of the Viking thing is far from looking like a Jeep. All right. Now, what I did was I put the front of a Rocco Jeep on here. It was a Rocco Jeep kit. So it at least has the Jeep look to it. And I've since purchased some little uh, headlights to put in there. And it was going along pretty well. But then I noticed something. Goes, well, the nose isn't quite lined up properly. And uh, in reality, it's actually a little smaller than what is needed for the people. This one is actually a little too small. Okay. So, once again, unpleased with the results, I went for something more Jeepish in that this is, in fact, a Jeep. It is the Atlas Wrangler Rubicon. Now, this model is a four-door, and the Jeep in the show is a two-door. So, once again, what to do, what to do, what to do. Well, first thing I thought was I scrape the handles and scrape the hinges and fill this in, then alter the roof line, probably cut it off, you know, take the whole thing apart um, and just alter the heck out of it. Then I found this Bush uh, Land Rover. And this is a two door, number one. The body length is correct. True, the front uh, grill will need to be replaced, and for that, I'll use another Roco Jeep grill to put on here. It has good fenders, uh, and the top can be altered for my needs. Okay? That's neither here nor there. That is simply going to complete the Longstreet cast. The first member of the cast that needs to be fooled with is the dog. So that brings us back to Little Merton little Walter Merton dogs. So, let's get on with that show and get the paint removed from the little dogs. Now, this method will work, I'm sure, for any other things that are painted, any other figures or animals that are pre-painted that you want to change the color on. And rather than painting over it and making the paint thicker, thus taking away any detail from the... These, these are small. There's my big old finger. Okay, these are small figures. When the paint was removed from this little dog here, the detail was pretty astounding. Oh, one more thing. Model scene accessories makes a set of dogs. Now, in here, we have... We have collies. We have... German Shepherds, we have what looks like little corgis, and a laying down dog of some species. Um, but anyway, this is another good, good start. Um, the dogs are a little on the big side when compared to actual 187 scale, okay? They're a little larger than what you need. So that's why we're going to go with this pooch right here. First thing we're going to do, and I'm going to assume any thinner would work for this, but I'm using the uh, True Color Paints Thinner. Um, this, uh, when I opened it up, the, the aroma sort of smells uh, like a cross between either denatured alcohol or rubbing alcohol and an acetone-based mix, um, which basically smells like nail polish remover, okay? And the way you work it, it's real simple. We open up the thinner, okay? And 
I'm a small watercolor artist brush. You don't need a lot of the stuff. I use a brush about this size here, okay? I simply dip it in a thinner and I saturate the dog, the figure, whatever you're working on. Do both sides. Now, from what I was working on last night, I found if you try and rub it off immediately, it's going to come off in a splotchy pattern. So I decided to do something, a method that I employed to remove decals. And that is to cover the little critter in some bathroom tissue paper, press it onto the wet figure, press it down. Doesn't matter if it lifts up, that doesn't matter, that's, that's not the problem. That's not a problem. Because next, I'm going to saturate the paper and have it make tight contact to the dog. All right. Now you let this sit like this for about 10 minutes or so. Press it into good tight, tight contact with the figure. It's a lot easier to do this when I'm directly over it instead of off to one side trying to do this <laughs> so the camera can pick it up. But really saturate the bejesus out of this, okay? Just get it soaked so that the paper is really weighed down with the thinner. Now, would I use actual um, lacquer thinner or straight acetone, or would I actually use even just a uh, nail polish remover alone? No. Why? Simply, I don't know if that's too strong for the plastic. I don't want to melt the plastic. That's the important thing. You don't want to melt the plastic. You do, however, want to soften up the paint. And I'm going to let this sit about 10 minutes. And when we come back, I'll start removing the paint and show you how easily it comes away from the figure. Until then, grab something to eat. Okay, we're back. It has not been 10 minutes. I just checked the dog. It's been a matter of, uh, it's been a matter of three minutes. And I, whoops, I started to apply more of the thinner to the backside of the dog when I noticed it was beginning to sort of alligator skin and it was peeling. So I touched it with the brush and the paint is quite simply lifting away from the pooch, as you can see. Okay, so... That being said, I'm going to go ahead and, <laughs> yeah, this works better than I thought. I was going to use the, uh, I, I guess you could use any kind of um, uh, thinner. I have a turpenoid, which is an odorless uh, paint thinner, uh, odorless turpen turpentine. I guess you could use that, but you see how the paint's just peeling away. And the main thing is to do this without damaging the plastic, and I don't think this is damaging the plastic. Didn't damage the plastic on this dog last night. So now I'm going to take it down, and I'm going to put it down on the, uh, on the work surface here. Focus in on it. And I'm going to take my little nylon brush. It's just a little nylon cleaning brush, and I'm going to go along like I did last night on the other dog, and I'm going to gently, you don't even have to do this, you see the gray paint, coming off onto the t onto the uh, the work surface here. Let me get some paper towel and wipe that away so it doesn't stick to anything else. Uh, let's get the dog back here, remove the paint. And we have the base color of this little German Shepherd sculpture. Then all the other areas of the dog, 
We simply re-dip the brush back into the thinner, reapply it to the pooch with a paint. You see, because the paint has filled in this area here down by the tail. All right. So if, if you try to paint over this, you're going to lose any detail that there might be. The paint right here is, is really, really thick. And it has filled in this detail where the hind leg joins the tail. Now, you know, the reality of the situation, folks, is they don't sculpt them this small, I don't think. They sculpt them in a decent size, but then through a, there's a, a reduction process where they can get, take them and reduce them down to any size that they, that they need. And this has been mastered over the years for all kind of industry, including the model train industry. Uh, let's get the dog here. We'll hold him up here now for the rest of this, I think. And I'll just simply reapply thinner to the pooch. Again, this area right in here where the hind leg and tail meet the butt of the dog, that detail is completely obscured by the layer of paint that's been put on here. Now, when I repaint this to become a white German Shepherd, I'm going to use... I'm actually going to use a white primer as my base coat, and then I will detail the rest of the dog's color. The dog's white German Shepherds are not pure white. They're not all white. They have tan in their coat, um, and I'll be applying that with various shades of... We have a flat earth, um, flat mud, um, sort of rust colors. Whatever I think will be good to be dry brushed onto him is what I will use. Now that this is really well applied here to the back end of the pooch, we're going to go down again to the work table surface, the work pad, and I'm going to give a little, I'm going to hold down on the sprue, try not to detach the dog, and I'm going to gently but firmly scrub and you can see the paint starting to break up. It may need to sit on this part of the figure. So what I'm going to do is, also what you can tell is, the seams on this little animal here, you can tell that this back leg is awfully, awfully thick. This back leg is mighty thick. So I'll be taking one of my little model, uh, jeweler's files and I'll be filing down the seams on these little dogs. Oh yeah, you can do it, and I will. Oh yeah. I right, so for right now, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put, I'm going to apply the paper, the toilet tissue that had the thinner on it. I'm going to squeeze that into contact on that part of the dog, and I'm going to re-wet that with thinner. It just so happened the true paint thinner, uh, the, the, rather the, the true color paints thinner, I bought for the paints, um, happens to be what's working on this little project right here. Um, I could have used probably the testers thinner. I could have used my Turpinoid. I could have used my Vallejo thinner. Uh, I just happened to pick this bottle up because <laughs> it's sitting on the top of my paint box with the rest of my True Color paints. All right, so it was there. It was available. Uh, so it was the first thing I grabbed, and it happened to work. And yeah, the smell of it does have a little nail polish remover odor to it. I'm going to let this sit another minute or two, then go at it again to remove the paint. I want it really fully, thoroughly saturated. I thought about using my, uh, my micro scale decal set or my um, Microsoft softener, decal softener. Uh, but I opted to go with a simple acrylic thinner. And another couple of minutes, 
I'll check the dog again. All right, well, it's been a couple more minutes or so. Um, I'm going to remove the paper from our one dog. I also added some paper and some more thinner to the dog I worked on last night because you can see in his crotchety area here, and it just came right off. That just, that just came right off. There was some paint left over from last night, and using the tip of a hobby file, I, <laughs> I'm not even scraping, it just lifted the paint clean away. Now let's get this dog finished up. I think the paint on this side may have just, oh, there it is, okay. Let's see if we can get this to come away. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's good. Now let's see what we can do here. Oh, there we go, right there. That piece of paint just popped right off. Clean as you clean as hound's tooth. Clean as a hound's tooth. What I'm going to do with this file now, I'm going to go ahead and take the seams down that are, that are still here. So let's just real gently. This is a pointed file which has a, sort of a football shape edge to it. It's rounded, but it has a fine sharp edge where the two parts of the file come together and meet. Let's just move this crud out of the way. And it's, it's neat to get into these. It, it doesn't require a lot of pressure. Okay, it doesn't require a lot of pressure to take the seams down and kind of neaten them up a little bit. Going under the tail here. The underside of the, of the pooches. The little, point, little pointy part of this file gets right up in here and knocks the paint clean out from the tail leg juncture on this little dog from last night. It's doing a fine job, uh, just remove the paint from the armpit area of this little dog from today. And it's taking it off the f bottom of the foot. There we go. I just want to I just want to get rid of this paint. I don't want it on here. I don't want it in the way when I go to repaint the dog. I want all the old paint off and that's what's happening. Okay, right now I'm going to take the seam on the tail away. And I think, by George, I think we've got it. Here, we now have two unpainted German Shepherds. I'm going to do one last thing like I did with the dog last night. I'm going to run this under clear water just to get the just to get the thinner off the plastic. There we go. There we are. Dogs have been rinsed again. A um, little piece of paper towel to just gently squeeze dry them. Just to absorb the water off the dogs. Here we now have two German Shepherds, two German Shepherd dogs, real nice miniature 187 scale dogs. And what's nice about this one is he can have his harness made up. The new harnesses will be made up of really, really thin uh, styrene strips, uh, flat styrene strips is what I'll be using to make the harness for this dog, for the new Mike Longstreet. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. All the paint has been removed from the dogs. Uh, let's do a little, a little bit of futzing with this, the back foot of this dog. I have a couple of other sets that I found same, uh, actually, it's, they're the same dogs. They're not on sprues, and they are, they have the, the, uh, the Fowler, F-A-L-L-E-R, 
they have the Fowler manufacturer name on them. Um, a lot of what would happen a lot of times, these little companies in Germany would go out of business and another one would take them over. So that would leave us with at least some representative of a nice item that was made by a company a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But there we have it. Uh, the two German Shepherds on this black sprue that had gray paint applied to them. They were not gray dogs with black paint applied to them. They were painted, essentially, reversed. Um, and what is neat here, these other dogs can remain as what they are. Uh, again, we have a, we have a Borzoi. Uh, we have some type of hunting dog, some type of hunting spaniel. The paint jobs are not the best. Um, what can be done for them is you can give them a little nose, a little black nose, darken the nose. With some colored pencil, you can give them, uh, you can indicate their eyes. You can even repaint, uh, for instance, this collie. You can give it better white markings. Uh, the little coon hounds, the little, little red tick hounds, they look pretty good. They're all right. They, they could use maybe... Um, little blackened in eyes. The, uh, the Great Danes on this set are pretty cool. Scooby-Doo! You give him a uh, little brown patch, dark patch on his back. Uh, again, uh, the little file can be taken in here um, and you can file the... And th these are a lot smaller than the horse figures and I've altered horse figures by removing seams. But you can get in here and remove the seams from the legs on the dogs and give them a much better profile, okay? And to some people, it might not make a difference, but if you're spending all the time on the locomotives and the rolling stock and you have the chance to add figures like this, why not do them upright? There's a little boxer pair of Great Danes. The Great Danes are pretty darn cool. I like them. Their coats could be a little blacker, but I like them. They're neat. They're neat. And of course this was uh, a little kitty cats. We have, a, we have what I call a creamsicle cat, orange and white. Uh, a gray cat. We have a Darker cats here. Actually, I, I would remove I would remove the brown on them to create black cats, which would match my two black cats, Little John and Coco. Um, the little hot dog. I don't know. The little poodle. Now the Merton sells these dogs in sets of human figures. There's a the German families walking their dogs. One is walking a boxer, one is walking uh, a poodle. Um, there are, are hunting scenes with the huntsmen and they have their spaniels, their hunting dogs and whatnot. So all of these dogs went into making up sets. Um, you could probably, very probably, remove the white paint, uh, the red paint, the rust colored paint from this dog here. And uh, if you're really brave or really, really insane, perhaps, you could dot that dog and turn it into a Dalmatian. And you can put it in your firehouse and stand it on your fire trucks. Mm, good grief. I know I'm crazy now. Uh, <laughs> I don't need little dogs to tell me I'm crazy. The, uh, the set of, well, these dogs right here from the model, model scenes accessories, this dog right here, the laying down dogs, this could conceivably be painted up as a Dalmatian right here. That could, it's a laying down dog. It could be laying down on a fire truck or in a firehouse. These, of course, are the Royal Corgis, okay? Um, and they're almost as big as the German Shepherd, which shows you that the H-O-O-O, -O -O, 
figures. You can use them for HO, but um, they really are more scaled to a little larger size. Now here's the German Shepherd out of the box compared to the Merton HO German Shepherd. There's quite a bit of difference. Now, German Shepherds vary in size. Okay, don't get me wrong. German Shepherds vary in size quite a bit. Now, the Collie Dog is fine. That's a little bigger, but that's fine. With all their fur, they appear larger than a German Shepherd would. Um, our white German Shepherd Floyd, his entire life, he weighed but 60 pounds. Okay? He weighed 60 pounds. There wasn't a lot to him. Um, he was all muscle. Um, toward the end, he lost a lot of weight. And um, he lost nearly 20% of his base body weight. Um, and that's what cancer does. But it does the same bloody thing to its human victims as well. Um, looking for a photo of him here. Now there's, there's my wallet photo of Floyd right there. My beautiful boy. His full name was Pretty Boy Floyd. Okay. That was Pretty Boy Floyd. And here's a shot of him sitting. His whole life, he weighed but 60 pounds. Okay. That was his, that was his, his main weight his entire life. But what you can see in his coat is he had the tan ears, the pink nose. All right and the tan markings throughout the coat. These markings coincide with the black markings on a black and tan German Shepherd. You know, your so-called, quote-unquote, normal German Shepherds. But here he is again, laying down, and you a good shot of the body. Um, in bright sunlight, he appeared pure white. Uh, of course, walking around the house and all, you could, you could tell his colors. So the fact that these German Shepherds are different sizes, really is not really a problem at all. In fact, there's another German Shepherd that is another uh, I think this is Fowler or, or Merton perhaps is this police dog here with this German police officer. It's actually one of the railway personnel. <laughs> A railway personnel set. Looks more like a, a uh, Gestapo agent. But um, this is yet another uh, German Shepherd model. Okay, this is another one. Um, they have a, another one in a police set. It's pure black. Okay, but here, all of them together, you have an idea as to the size of the animals. Okay? They pretty well match up. They pretty well match up. Um, and again, the um, model scene accessory dogs. So that's it. That's it. That's that's it for this uh, this video. Um, the next video I will be painting these dogs. I'll be painting both of them. They're both going to be white shepherds, mostly as a um, a uh, a form of practice for them. Um, again, in applying this stuff, this uh, applying thinner to your uh, to your figures, use a a soft uh, a watercolor brush to for the application. For taking it off, you can use either this nylon brush here, or as you saw today, I was able to actually lift it away with this brush. Okay, you can also use a little stiffer white nylon bristle brush, right? And if you have in your collection a brush that's really no good for anything but weathering. These bristles are real short and real stiff. Okay, right here. See how short and stiff these bristles are? Well, you could get right in and you could clean up with this little brush right here because it's stiff and it gets in and it'll wipe, wipe the paint away. Um, you could take this guy down. It was basic plastic color, which is white as you can see by the bottom of the base. Okay. Um, these are painted pretty well. Uh, overall, they're painted pretty well. I say, for things like their eyes and all, little colored pencils are 
regular pencil with uh, a soft lead and you can just touch it down touch the pencil down and rotate it just a little bit there'll be another one when I when I when I do the people for the um, that are going to go with the dog the cast of Longstreet uh, which was James Franciscus Marlon Mason and um, James Franciscus died a long time ago uh, Marlon Mason and Peter Mark Richmond who played uh, Duke the guy who would hire him uh, to investigate insurance frauds, which he was doing bef before he lost his eyesight in an explosion, um, which also killed his wife, of course. You know, it, it has to be like that. Um, but um, Peter Mark Richmond is still alive as well. But uh, I'll be recreating all these little characters in 187th scale, and then we'll be recreating the car as well. Um, and it will be in scale. Now, like I said, years ago, this little pooch, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad for a German Shepherd, considering it was made from a uh, retriever of some kind. It was made from a floppier dog, so I, I was pretty happy with it for years. And then, of course, I got older and I realized, hey, yeah, there are better looking German Shepherds out there. Much better looking German Shepherds out there. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, by the way, it was already white plastic, and I painted it white. Uh, it's a semi-gloss paint. It's okay. We'll be going with flat colors for this next one. So anyway, until next time, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for cigars. Later, Gators.